Hello everyone. Today we will be creating this interactive poster effect. Think of poster effects or AR target tracking effects as a way of bringing your already printed materials to a new level. Imagine being in an event and having a schedule and being able to scan that schedule and get extra information on the speaker profiles, updates of rooms, and even get like an augmented reality demo in real time. This is actually a very accessible tool that you can add to your current events or future events, and that can like really make it pop and make it feel special. So let's get started. So like usual, I am on my landing page. Um, if I come down here to create with template, I'll notice there's already a 3D animated poster template and a 3D animated card template. We won't be using these for now. I'll talk about this at the end of the tutorial, but this exists in here and we'll go over why would you want to use this or not. For now, I'm just going to go here, sharing effect. And I have the screen that usually receives me. The first thing that I want to do is import my assets. The most important asset that I have though is my poster because this is the image that I'm going to be tracking and is the image that my computer is going to be finding or my cell phone is going to be finding in AR. An important thing to notice about this image is because this is detected by computer vision, you want to have an image that has you no know, variation and contrast. Uh, text is always really cool because it already has a lot of difference on shapes and it makes it like rather easy to create a uh, something that is easy to identify. But for example, you can see I have these little dots in here. I have these hard shapes that are like very contrasty with the background. And I make sure that some of my text actually is an outline and not a full letter to create some difference and making sure it feels like how I want it to feel. Another thing is uh, to create this effect, what I did is that I have my full image which is the printed poster where I have like my background and my text all in the same place, but I exported these assets on separate layers. So I can offset them on the Z space when I'm creating my AR effect. So I have my background separated from creative technology, separating from these arrows, separated from these uh, shapes. So I can like actually position them where I think they look better as I design. So not only I have my poster, if I come here, I can add every one of those assets. For example, I have my background that you notice is the poster bad without uh, the text. And I also have uh, the animation of the other things. So if you notice, this is just the poster without the text. And so what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to add my other animations. I already did my animations in After Effects. So I just come here on Texture Animation choose file, creative technology, and I make sure that I select every single frame. And because I don't want this to create a million planes that is gonna make my project disorganized, I'm gonna turn off add to plane for now. I'm gonna import it. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure in my animation sequence properties, that is at 12 frames per second, because I animated these at 12 frames per second. So that's quite important for me. The last thing that I wanna do is Usually we haven't touched on this because we haven't done projects where we bring a lot of assets. We just use the automatic compression because we're going to be having a lot of animations. I want to be more deliberate with that. Usually automatic compression makes files bigger, particularly in like larger file sizes. So if you notice, this usually is 610 kilobytes, but it is becoming a 12 megabyte file on Android. So I want to make sure that either I use manual or non. Non usually just leaves it at the same number it has. So if I did a pre-compression, for example, using Crushy or uh, Tiny PNG, I'm fine. If not, I can use some manual compression and that usually makes things uh, more of an acceptable size. And now that I did this, I'm going to do this with every single one of my texture animations, not only with technology, but with things like my different crosses and uh, the different assets that I have on my scene.
The last asset of this set of assets that I want to import is my dust particle for my particle animation. It's just a simple sprite that I made on After Effects and I'm using it here. So now that I have my assets, the number one thing that I want to do is, of course, adding my target tracker. So if I come in here on my plus on my scene, I can select my target tracker and I insert it. In the moment I create my target tracker, it creates this like little shaded box. Uh, and this shaded box is actually just, is both a preview and like a guide. If I select my target tracker here in properties, you can see that I can select the texture that belongs to my target tracker. So I'm gonna select here my posters one, and if you notice, in the moment I pick my poster one, it replaces it with this image. And I can see like a ghost image of my poster. This is very useful because when I try this effect on my phone, what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna have like a ghost preview of how, what image should my user be looking for. This is really important if you have multiple target trackers or if, for example, you are your user is like trying this for the first time and they're alone and there's like multiple posters, what poster should they be? scanning, it's good to have an image like this that allows them to know where to go. The other thing to know about using a target tracker is if I come here on plus and I say, let's, I want to add another tracker, I don't have access to the plane tracker, which is the one that allows me to have world events or world objects. Um, target tracker and plane tracker are not, cannot be on the same project. I don't have the same issue with a uh, hand tracker or face tracker, and I can have multiple target trackers. So I could have three or four posters being scanned on a single effect. So if I have five posters for an event, I don't have to have five events. I can have multiple posters at the same time. Uh, the one thing to take in consideration, of course, is the scale, how many things you can have at the same time. You don't want it to be uh, a super heavy effect or maybe uh, like you can have a lot, you, you lose the ability of having a lot of animation. So that's something to consider, uh, but I mean, it's possible. And now that I have my target tracker, this image that I'm seeing, this is not an actual thing that is gonna show up on my experience. I have to create my plane. And so what I'm going to do right now is that I'm gonna create a 3D plane. And in the moment I create my 3D plane and I drop it under my target tracker, you'll notice it immediately takes the zero, zero position of my target. If I make this of the exact same scale of my tracker, the cool thing of this is that whatever I put in this plane now, it's always gonna match the scale of my poster. If my poster is of this gigantic size, it's like a very six feet by six feet poster, uh, I, if I track it and this is matching this scale, it's gonna match the scale of that object. So this is like very good because it allows you to scale your assets to the effect, to the size of the poster without having to do anything else. So in this case, I'm just gonna create this plane and I'm gonna call this plane my, my background plane so I have an idea what I'm doing. And I wanna create the material for this plane again and I'm gonna rename this material background again because I wanna keep my things organized. And I'm gonna make it flat. And so if I come in here and I use my background as a texture, you've noticed that immediately it got a little bit darker. Why? Because I'm actually seeing something in my scene. This is actual something. This plain background is actually something. The other reason why it's dark is uh, because, oh it, yeah, there's nothing on it. So it's like uh, covering the text. So I can actually duplicate this plane for now. I'm just gonna do that. And uh, I am going to name this plane that I just duplicated. I'm just going to name it uh, Creative Technology. And again, I'm going to duplicate this material. And I'm going to call it Creative Technology or CT. Because that's where my Creative Technology animation goes. And if I come here and replace my texture by my Creative Technology animation, I'm just gonna turn on this on and off. I replace my material. You can see there my animation, calling on creative technology. What is cool about this too, if you notice, I have some C level on this. So creative technology is not only right away on the plane, but it has like a little bit of uh, 
the projection. And I'm going to replicate this for my three cross levels. So I'm going to create three more planes and I'm going to add the corresponding materials. Okay, so now I just want to like move my planes on C space so they show up and like place them where I think, okay, this kind of looks cool, maybe more back, more forward. Let's see. Okay. So if I come in here, I can get an idea of how it's looking. Yes, yeah, some projection on C. Let's put this. Actually, what I want to move back is this one. There it is. So like that, there's like a sense of like, oh, this is moving on C. It's not only just a flat plane. The last thing I want to do in this world of adding three-dimensionality is actually adding a 3D text. So if I come here on my scene and my assets, I can actually add 3D text. So if I hit insert, I have a 3D text. Again, if I drop it under my target tracker, it goes to the zero position of that target tracker. I'm just going to push it a little bit forward and I'm going to push it down. And here, what is so cool about this is like currently it has like some predetermined fonts I don't like. I can actually bring my own fonts. So if I come here on plus import from computer, I have a set of fonts that I selected. I really like. I like my Josephine Sans bold and my semi bold. I'm just going to bring the bold for now. Let's see if this works. And I'm just going to use this font. So now if I come back here, I'll notice that I already have my Josephine Sans text. And so I'm just going to copy my text uh, because this is like not a text tool precise. I mean, it's a 3D text tool, but like it's not a text editor. I have to make sure I have my line cuts, my line breaks. Otherwise, it's just going to have like a gigantic line. I'm just going to drop this in here. And I'm going to duplicate this a second time because I want to put another version of this text up here. And what is cool about this, you already sort of noticing, I am expanding outside the frame of the poster. So I can, as long as I have some part of the poster on view, I can start adding information that expands outside the edges of the frame and like makes it look like, okay, there's more information to take. Uh, the last thing I want to do is right now, when I created my 3D text, if you notice, it created this material 00. zero. And it has front material, side material, and back material. What is so cool about these 3D texts in MetaSpark is that in the moment you create the material, it does create these three, the text, it creates these three materials that allows you to change the look. Uh, and they behave like any other material. So I can, in this case, I'm going to call it material text. I can make this a physically based material, number one thing. I can change the color to make it something that maybe works better with what I have. I can add some metalness to it, not too much, uh, but also I can add an environment map to help with the reflections. If I come here on environment and I click up in this little check mark, there's nothing, nothing shows up, but I can select a texture. I can bring a HDRI from the internet or I can search something on the AR library. They have some environment textures that I could use. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna use this one to make the reflections pop more. So let me place this better so it looks like I want it to look. Let me make sure this has a proper depth because maybe it's too 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 ahead. And here I have it. So now this is like a more dynamic 3D printed poster. And let's see if we can check how it looks in real life. So here, if I start, you can see that it's telling me to find the image. It's showing me the same poster, but with a little bit of like, again, like a ghost image. And once I find my poster, it tracks to it. So what is so cool about this is that it has the reflections, as you can see, because I have some metalness on my material and I have my HDRI. And the other thing is that I can move around on this space. I don't have to have my poster all the time in view. It has an idea where the poster is located and it tries to track it to there. So 
This is looking pretty fine. What I want to do now is add my particle. So let's get back to Metaspark. Okay. So now what we want to do is adding like other particles. And these are actually pretty easy to do. Again, I just come here on my scene. Plus, and if I come to the very end, I have the particle system. If I hit insert, it creates a particle system, it creates an emitter. And it has properties that we've seen on every other particle system. I have things like the type of emitter that I have, and I have the birth rate, the spray angle, the speed, and the lifespan. For now, I'm just gonna make sure it is a plane. And if you notice the zero position of my emitter is where particles are started. So I'm just gonna move this lower, lower, lower. If we have something like a plane tracking effect on a world tracking effect, we can actually track our particles to a specific point of the location so we can walk around them because this is a, a target tracking effect. It's just gonna walk with us. But if we make the square big enough, it's gonna have some sense of dimensionality. So I'm just gonna make sure this is actually one by one. So it's like big. Remember that in MetaSpark, one is a lot. And then I also want to increase my lifespan so they actually go all the way up. And uh, I think, and I want to reuse my speed a little bit. It feels a little bit too, too much. So this is looking fine to me for now. I mean, I could add more things. I could play with them. But for now, let's leave it like that. What I want to do though, is that I want to change my material. So if I come after my particle properties and my emitter properties, I have my material properties. And if I hit plus, it allows me to create a new material specifically for the particle. So I'm just going to rename this material MT particles. And again, I want to make sure I want to make this a flat material. I'll show you why in a second. I want to make sure that my texture is indeed my dust. And the other thing that I want to do with my particle is that I want to, uh, let me reload this so we can see them. Here it is. But you can see it has like this weird breaking around the image. So I want to do a couple of things. The first one that I want to do, I want to come to my advanced render options. And I want to turn off right to depth test. And so it automatically actually, it stopped doing that. You cannot see it because this is a white background. Let me see if I can change this to a place where it's more evident. But it is always now behind my poster. The other thing that I can do now is that I can come here on layers and create a new layer on top of my layer zero, which is where everything else, I'm just going to rename this particles because I want it to be. No, that is for particles. And I'm going to make sure my emitter is under particles. And so now you see that it goes forward. The other thing to know about this is that if you notice, I'm putting my particle emitter outside my image target tracking. And the reason to do that is like everything else on this scene appears only while I'm seeing my target tracking. If I stop looking at my target, it disappears. It stops happening. I want to make it with my particles. So I find the tracking, the target once and it emits my particles and it continues emitting no matter what. And to do that, I am actually going to separate this from the target tracker and I'm going to connect them on the patch editor. Before we do that, the last thing I want to do is that I want to do some warm up. Uh, why is that? Because I don't want my particles always to start from the bottom coming all the way up. I want them to be like halfway there. I want them to be already happening. So warm up allows me to like preload frames. So I'm just going to say warm up and I'm just going to say, hey, 15 seconds. So now whenever I start my sequence, my particles are already on full motion, uh, full speed ahead. So now that I have this, what I want to do is again, I'm going to come to my patch editor and I want to bring my target tracker. I'm going to select it and I'm just going to drop it. And so now here I have my target tracker. As I mentioned earlier, you can have multiple target trackers. So I could actually change here. What is the tracker that is causing the effect? And I have my found, I have position of my object, the scale and everything. What I care about is my found. And if you remember, this is actually sending a Boolean signal, a bool signal that says, I found it or I didn't found it. It's only a yes or a no. 
And what I want you to do is instead of telling me whether you have it or not, don't tell me while you have it. I just want you to find it once and tell me that you found it. And that's all I need to know. So I'm just going to create a switch. If you remember, we used the switch last time. And instead of making it use a flip, which is sort of a toggle, I'm just going to make my switch always just say turn on. So I only need to know once. And once I know, my switch is forever on. And uh, because I want to make a little animation, I want my particles to like fade in instead of just like showing up. What I'm going to do here is that I'm going to add, of course, a uh, animation. <laughs> And then a uh, transition. And my transition, uh, I'm going to change this from vector to color because I want it to be a color. And so the way that I'm going to make sure my particles do appear or disappear softly is that it, I'm not going to touch anything in here because the only option in here is like on off, which is not what I want. The only thing that I can control, I mean, I could do the other thing. I could also change my birth rate and it. I could go from like zero to 20. But if I did that, uh, I, there's no point of doing my warm up. They would start from the scratch again, and that's not what I want. So the only way that I can do what I want specifically is actually modifying the material of my particles. So I'm going to take my texture and I'm going to make my texture either visible or invisible. I'm just going to take my dust. Uh, my dust like texture that I brought and I'm going to multiply right now my color transition for my texture so I have it in here and because it's black it will multiply to nothing and because it's white it will multiply to white but what I want to make sure in here actually is that I make this off a channel zero so now my first color whatever it is at alpha channel is zero and it's just going to do this. And so now if I come in here, my particles start very softly. I could even make this longer so it feels more like that. And I could change the type of animation if I wanted. I want to make it sinusoidal. So now here it is. Even softer and nicer. What is so cool about this too is that actually I can change the color of this in an animation if I wanted. For now, I'm just going to make it like a light pink. And I want to make sure that my, my material, I have my blend mode as add. So it feels like it is actually adding to the color. It feels more like particles. And it looks really good when I actually use it on top of like real world things. So that's basically what I'm able to do here with this. And uh, let's see it for a moment. Let's see if we can see it. We just send it to try it on our phone. Okay, so just like my last time, I have my image telling me, hey, find my image. And if I come in here, it finds it, it creates everything. But unlike last time, what is so cool about these particles is if you notice, no matter whether I have my image in view or not, I keep my particles with me, I can look around, I can keep them even though I don't have any more the target tracker. The last thing I want to show you is uh, the 3D animated poster template, which is in here. And this is actually a pretty cool template. It does have, as, it's as easy as saying like, hey, where it says replace me, you can replace the image you want to track, you want to use as your target tracker. And here, uh, right here, you can drop your assets. Uh, the reason why this template is particularly cool overall, actually, is because it has a very cool UI. So it has very good feedback for a user to know whether they found what they're looking for, whether they're getting there or not. And I usually like to use this template for that UI component specifically. However, if you come here to the patch editor, you'll notice there's a lot of things happening already. So if you're like getting used to it, starting to work with your patch editor can get a bit confusing. That's why we didn't start with this. But honestly, if you're working on a project and you know exactly what you want to do and it's nothing super complex, you can actually use, use this template. The UI is excellent um, and like it makes everything look very good when you like actually export it to Instagram. So that's the reason why we didn't use it initially. The same thing with the uh, business card template. The only difference is like in this case, you have your object on the uh, horizontal plane. And so you try to build everything thinking of that horizontal. Uh, but that's all for now. 
I hope this was useful for you, that you learned something and it's giving you ideas of how you can use AR on like your real time uh, life events production already. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.